Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Morales and I'm here at the Heart Rhythm Society Conference. I'm here with Dr. Firaz Zawi, who's an electrophysiologist based off of near Dearborn, Michigan, and we're going to talk about patients who have congestive heart failure and atrial fibrillation. Dr. Zawi, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time thank during you. your conference to come in and have thank an interview with us. Thank you. So patients who have atrial fibrillation as well as congestive heart failure can be a very difficult patient population to manage. Right. How do you pr approach that? When you first meet a patient who has AFib and congestive heart failure, what are some of the first steps that you try to do when you meet a patient? Correct. There are those two diseases are very common to come together. We see a lot of patients with congestive mm -hmm. heart failure, yeah. with develop arterial fibrillation, yeah. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, once I meet, once, once first time when I meet a patient, I usually try to, uh, to identify which is comes first. Is the patient has congestive heart failure first, mm -hmm. and they'll develop arterial fibrillation, or if they have arterial fibrillation, they develop congestive right. heart failure. Then we try to talk about their symptoms, mm -hmm. what their concern, mm -hmm. and address those and try to educate them about the disease, about the combination, and how can we handle it. Sometimes there is no cure for atrial fibrillation, mm -hmm. but for most part we're able to manage it and help patients with their symptoms. Uh, we talk about what the risk factors, how we can adjust it, how we can modify it, how we can help them with that. We talk about all the study in terms of medication, in terms of uh, blood thinner as well. Right. And we offer most of our patients an, an ablation strategy, which mm -hmm. has been shown that to improve their survival, they live better, right. longer, and they get less symptoms uh, from the population. And that's actually been a fairly significant change lately. There's been some more articles that are showing that people who have heart failure and you treat their AFib more aggressively, they're out of the hospital and they may live longer. Has any of this newer data changed how you approach your patients, or would you say it's been the same way this whole time, or you think it's actually changed some of how you influence it? No, it has changed our, our strategy. Uh, typically, those patients has a little bit harder to treat, mm -hmm. and we thought a patient may not help them, but mm -hmm. with all the new studies and new, and new research, showed that actually that treating them aggressively early enough would help them with their symptoms, mm -hmm. with their survival, and even with the congestive heart failure. Especially if the atrial fibrillation is causing the congestive heart failure, when we put them back in right. normal rhythm and stay in normal rhythm, they have like a really good chance of say, getting back and, and re recovering from the congestive heart failure and have a heart function, normal heart function for the rest of their life. And, and I agree with, obviously, rhythm control is a very important for people who have congestive heart failure. But as far as optimizing somebody, getting them ready for an ablation procedure, do you have methods you usually do? Do you try to cardioverse somebody first and then do an ablation later on? Is there some uh, strategy you get to kind of optimize that patient with congestive heart failure? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes like we try to optimize their medication first, make sure they are not like having a lot of fluid in their mm -hmm. body before mm -hmm. the ablation, make sure they have been on a liquid uh, duration of a blood thinner as well. Uh -huh. Depending on their symptoms, if they are urgent, we do a cardioversion, we wait like a few weeks and then we'll bring for ablation. Sometimes if they are symptom stable, they can just schedule them as an outpatient. What about the ablation procedure itself? When somebody has congestive heart failure, does that factor, how much does it factor in what you're going to do during the ablation procedure? Are you, are you more, do you counsel people more to say, well, I have to kind of be minimalistic and then I might have to do more than one procedure because of your congestive heart failure? Does, does your procedure approach change when somebody has congestive heart failure? It does because with the patient with congestive heart failure, I understand that they have a more aggressive disease. So I have to be, do a little bit more than what I do in patients with a normal heart function. Yeah. We try to be aggressive more with ablation, cover all the areas so they don't have to come back for redo ablation. And then we try to optimize the medication after, afterwards so they can stay in normal rhythm. Do you find that it's harder for people with congestive heart failure to recover after an ablation procedure? Do you think it's a longer recovery process compared to somebody who doesn't? I don't notice that because most of our procedures right now are short. Usually, like we do the ablation procedure within two hours, two hours and a half, even with the difficult cases. So, because we shorten the duration of the procedure, yeah. we optimize their blood thinner mm -hmm. and their uh, mm -hmm. water bill before and after procedure. Typically, I keep them overnight, they go home next day without any issue. Now, we touched about it a little bit at the beginning, but for people out there who have AFib and they have congestive heart failure, there are many people who are just being managed with medications and they may not even be aware that there are other options as well. So what would you say to those types of patients that really that approach hasn't been given to them or their doctor said, you know, nothing's going to work, you know, how, how would you 
I guess recommend the people to kind of seek other options for that. Yeah, I recommend to them like to seek a, a formal consultation from electrophysiology to talk about their op all their options and to understand it and uh, and consider it. I, I I see some patients they don't have an option of ablation, which I understand. Yeah. But those are minority of patients. We can help a lot of patients improve their symptoms, have them live longer, live better life, and hopefully minimize all the effect of what they have population. And that's actually something that I've talked about plenty on my my website and on my articles is that I don't think patients are sent to electrophysiologists enough. You know, there's so much devastating consequences of AFib with this of heart failure, and there's so many things that electrophysiologists like yourself and myself can do to help improve Absolutely. people's lifestyle and get them out, keep them out of the hospital and potentially help Absolutely. them live longer. And I think that getting that education out there, getting them Absolutely. people to know that the sooner you see an electrophysiologist, the sooner you realize what options you have to manage AFib, the better people do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, well Dr. Zara, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I can't agree anymore. That's, that's a really good point. Early referral, early consideration for all the options. And understand your options. I think that's, yeah. that's our view to the patient. Yes. Well, Dr. Zara, I really appreciate you coming by, taking a few My minutes pleasure. while your conference. I really My appreciate pleasure. your having here. Thank you. My okay, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.